Okay, so today we're going to start by um, having a very informal critique of your Tokidoki assignment, the skateboards, and all of them that I have seen look really, really nice. Um, I don't know that I have much of any kind of criticism. I just want um, each of you to share with me um, so that we have an idea of what, you know, your, what your inspiration was. Um, uh, any aha moments and thoughts that you can share with the rest of your students, your peers. So let me go ahead and move this down like so. So Natalie, um, tell us about yours. Three Hi. different approaches. Um, go ahead. Okay. Um, well, when I started, I knew that I wanted to do like something with like nature because I feel like they have a lot more colors. Mm -hmm. So I started with the beach one. Um, I feel like that one's probably the most plain, but I did that one mostly by hand. Um, I used some photos from the internet, like the palm tree or the starfish and stuff. Uh -huh. um, but then on the other ones, like I started, um, I guess, being more creative. Okay. And for the for the bowl one, I used the the color patterns that we learned about. Yeah, I cool. The, no, that's, that's evident. I don't know. So that and yeah. Yeah, I think it was called analogous. And yeah, it was kind of hard to take the fish out of the out of the picture because there's like a white background and I didn't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. So I had to look it up, but sort of I finally photo. found out. <laughs> yeah, that's sort of a Photoshop um, project to isolate yeah. images. Yeah. Very nice. Um, Probably, you know, I don't know that it's criticism, but maybe it's the, let's start with the middle one and the last one. The middle one is almost reminiscent of what you would see with Andy Warhol through repetition or variation. Um, and, you know, your color choices and nice bright colors and everything work really nice. Your type choice works really well for El Toro. Um, I might enlarge the type, try to enlarge it just a smidge, but I don't know that it would really be necessary. So that oh, one okay. is perfect. And the same with the one to the right. I think the way that you have um, arranged the, the fish and the flowers and at first I was thinking, you know, maybe the type choice could be a little different, but the more I look at it, the more I like it. So I don't know that I would change anything with that. The first one, I like what you've done. You've taken a very simple approach to beach scene. Skateboards are part of the beach, you know, it's everything. But for example, based on what we've just learned with brushes, think of what you could do with the palm trees. You could use an arc brush and you could have it um, create a custom art brush and take the palm trees and you could stretch them. You know, oh, okay. so, that, so that if you look down here, this is sort of a dead area. And if, if the bottom of the palm trees, you know, stretched, well, you enlarged it all just a little bit, but the bottom of the palm trees stretched all the way down here, it would just sort of bring your eye up into the skateboard deck and, you know, the rest would be good. Now, something um, else that we haven't talked about yet. I don't think we have, but <clears throat> your type choice for be beach vibes works perfect. But um, there are some, maybe it's the next assignment that we could focus on. Um, there are ways that you can distort the type and get it to contour and fit the bottom of this really quite nicely. Um, Actually, we did, when we covered typography, you could do that a little bit, but there are some other tools um, that we have that, uh, that would enable you to distort it. And, you know, if it isn't entirely legible because it is a skateboard deck, um, that's okay, but it has more of an aesthetic appearance and appeal. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I was kind of worried about it being readable. Don't, yeah, don't worry about it. Um, and I like the patterns and the color choices for the background to help offset the, the skateboards so that they really pop and stand out. 
you know, um, noise. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no, I don't know that I would change, you know, just a couple of things. Maybe um, tomorrow or Thursday, I'll show you what you can do with the, the type um, on okay. beach vibes to distort it. Because there's an envelope kind of distort that you can do. And it enables you to kind of tweak it in, the, in any number of directions. I don't know if you're familiar with um, some of the graphic design from the 60s, the psychedelic look in typography. But yeah, um, I was kind of trying yeah, to but do that. It's, it's very easy to, to do that in Illustrator. What took artists or illustrators, you know, a lot of time and skill to do by hand, you can do very easily in, in, in Illustrator now. So that would be okay. Okie doke. Do you have anything else or does anyone else? Hold on. Um, let me bring up. Um, participants bring that up. If you have, if there's something that you want to share, I can go ahead and I can um, allow everybody to talk. Um, so if you want to um, share, let me know. No? Uh, they are just really nice. I like how the colors pop. I think um, I'm gonna have to go with that uh, color scheme. Yeah, and I think that's important. You know, I mean, skateboards are kind of like billboards in the sense that they, they're not, they're static, but they, they, the billboards don't move, but you move in relation to the billboards. And the skateboards, unless it's a decorative skateboard that you're gonna put on the wall, you know, they're constantly, you know, you're on them and you're moving around and to grab the a viewer's attention, you know, it has to really pop and to read very quickly. That's the nature of billboards. So that's what skateboards can do. But on the other hand, if it's a decorative skateboard and it's meant to be viewed, you know, on and just uh, on, and, and displayed on walls, then that's a whole different story. So, and these could probably function as both. They work kind of nicely that way. Cool, okay. So let me go back and let's go back again. Let's go to the next. Um, does anybody want to go next? Um, let's see. How about we have one in here yet? Uh, is your skateboard? Um, so you, yep. is, your, um, is your skateboard done? Yep. It's the... Oh, it's a box. That's right. I forgot. Okay. Well then, um, do you want to tell us about it? It's not a skateboard. Yeah, I forget. I forget. But I looked uh, at it the other day, so it's kind of cool. I want to show an energy um, and uh, because to, to stop the uh, something in Hawaii. It's a starfish which is surfing with the dog. Uh, if this is to be made a wallet, I want it to be a leather wallet. Oh. I want uh, I want to, to give a feeling of leather texture. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, it, yeah. Yeah. Have, have you tried actually cutting it out and, you know, print, do you have a, access to a printer? Uh, yes. It would be, have you tried cutting it out and putting it together and taking a snapshot of it and sharing it with us? Um, Not today, uh, you know, but uh, maybe by the end of the term. Yeah. Um, do you want to tell everybody how you did the type? in 3D? Yeah, 3D, yeah, yeah. So how did you do that? Uh, illustration, no. oh, I'm sorry. That's well, okay, okay. Does that, do the rest of you, does anybody have any, any comments or thoughts on it? Does everybody understand? This is a wallet, right? 
Yeah, Water Lake. Right. Okay. Uh, I like that she chose to do something different. Uh, yeah. I always appreciate that. I also like that everything looks laid out and does look like it could work. Um, the colors are really nice. I like that. It's like that pop art kind of feel, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And then I think it's, yeah, I think it's really nice. Very beachy, very in the mood for summer. So good on you. Yeah, exactly. Very cool. Yeah, that's different. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okie doke. Yeah, like I said, today's probably going to go very quickly. So, um, what's the next one? Um, I'm looking at our participants. Let's go to Alexander Martin. Okay, Alexander, I don't see yours yet, right? Okay, that's all right. It's in there. It's the person. What's that? It's the first one. It's just not popping up the image. This one here? Oh, okay. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Cool. I'm just enlarging it. Okay. Cool. Tell us about it a little bit. Uh, okay, so the first one, I wanted to do something like Tokidoki because this style is where you just add a bunch of images in, like, in the design. But I was drawing everything by hand, so it's, it's really difficult, and it is really time-consuming. Um, like the toucan, uh, the Saimong monkey, the anaconda, and the gorilla. Um, so I kind of stopped there. I was going to add a whole bunch of different stuff that are that belong to the rainforest, but I just stuck with those. And uh, I don't know why the tree is off. I just realized that now. Okay. But uh, yeah, all that was drawn basically with the pencil tool. And then, yeah, that's, that's the rainforest one. Um, the second one is a penny board. And uh, that one was inspired based well the whole theme is set off of this gorilla so i started with that icon and made a brand behind it so that's kind of where you see him skating throughout all of these things okay um so the gorilla is like skating through the rainforest then it goes uh through a revolution essentially because uh the second one is based off of uh gil scott heron's poem the revolution will not be televised so mm -hmm. Um, in the TV, I made a pattern, a static pattern, and if you zoom in on it, you'll see that it actually has the word televised in it as well, but it gets obscured with the TV, so you don't really see it, and that's kind of why I put it so small, um, but it's there, and uh, yeah, it's kind of like relevant to what we're going through today as well, um, so it's kind of what inspired me to do that one. Okay. And then, then the third one you have um, the gorilla just, you know, kind of skating over a city, even though the path is like on the bottom. So the, I didn't really have any words for it. I mean, I was going to put overcome just to throw it in there because I used conquer for the first one, mm -hmm. um, but just didn't know where. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, uh, it's the third one is called um, the path. Uh, your path isn't always as straight as it seems. It's kind of why I made it crooked, but there's nevertheless, there's a path to get to where you need to go. And then the grill's kind of like kick flipping over, <laughs> over, over the city. Yeah. To the show overcome. Yeah. I like the fact, I like the branding idea. The gorilla is a, is a great idea. Um, the only criticism I have, let's start with the first one. Um, that the background, I would probably change the opacity of the pattern to maybe 20, 25%. Right. So that the skateboard pops a little bit more. And then even though, I mean, I know that you don't have the library of images that Simone does. I mean, he just has a gazillion of them. And I'm sure that yours are just fine. But then what you could do is rather than keep them all the same size, you could still work with scale. You know, you can scale some up and some down. So, you know, make one the dominant image and make the others subordinate to it. Something like that. 
Right. Okay. Um, so that's what I that's what I would do. I'd play with scale a little bit on those, um, and that's about it. the The second one, don't know that I would change anything. Um, and you know, it's kind of hard to see on a tiny little screen, but I know that it would look fine otherwise. And I like um, the attention to detail and the fun background, so that it has kind of a rocket ship appeal or, or look. And the, the third one, um, the, your design and having it work with the shape of the board works really, really nice. So in the simplicity of it, and that sort of thing, they all they work really well. So it's really probably only the first one that I would change a little bit. OK, thank you. OK. So what do we got next? Um, I gotta zoom out a little bit. Let's see. And, uh, um, anybody want to go next? Let's go to Avalon. Let's see what this one here. Avalon, you can you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, go ahead and, they're, they're beautiful. Tell us about them. Um, well, if you look, click on the next page, that's my original sketch. I did that in a different program called Procreate on my iPad and I uploaded it to um, Adobe. So I basically traced this. Um, it took a really long time because I had to do everything individually because I wanted a lot of like the colors being different. Oh, you can switch back. I wanted the colors to be like interchanging a lot because mm -hmm. yeah, my theme was like jewels and gems and stuff. And if you look at photos of them, all there's tons of different shades and hues inside of it. And there's no easy way to like indirectly change them without being a separate shape. Uh -huh. So yeah, these took a pretty long time, but I'm really happy how they turned out. They look oh, no, really, they look really pretty. And that's what my goal was for them to be pretty. Yeah, the whole thing is gorgeous. It's really nice. And, you know, we're definitely um, women skaters, you know, skateboarders. So that would appeal to them. You know, that's the other thing that, you know, if this right now, everybody is designing for your personal use. But if you're going to do this commercially, you know, then you want to think who's my audience, who's my target audience. And if women, particularly young girls, are not um, being addressed, their desire, their needs, their wants, then I think something like this would be perfect for them. You know, that would be an untapped or I think, you know, market to approach. So yeah, that's very nice. Anybody else have any thoughts about it? Um, I really love the color so much. I'm super envious of that color choice. I struggle with color a lot. So for me, when I saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, you understand color. Yeah, no, nice pastels. And then the rubies were not, uh, you've incorporated pastels, but some also some really bright colors. Yeah, it works really well. Thank so you. that the, the gems themselves, the uh, emeralds are nice, you know, pure bright. Um, intense colors, but then the other colors surrounding them are the, more on the pastel side. But, um, so you're working with it more of analogous colors, which is really nice. Yeah, that's nice. And you've adapted, again, the design. I'm not saying too much about that, but how it works within the shape of the skateboard tap is really, really, it works really well. And your use of type. Um, Again, kudos works really nicely. Thanks. Um, I actually had to import those from like the Adobe website. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, they're beautiful. Good job. Yeah, excellent. Are these uh, like characters that you use in other places in your art or do they come from somewhere? Um, no, I just made them up. Yeah, well, I think you got something going there. It would be something that you could pursue and, you know, create a whole line of, of illustrations that are based on that. That's a good idea. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. 
something, you know, that's how that sort of thing happens. <clears throat> that oftentimes you'll do something for a school assignment or it'll be a client or something and you have no intention of going in a certain direction and it just sort of it, um, strikes a chord with you and you go, mm, you have an aha moment. Think that, you know what, maybe I could pursue that a little bit further and take it in a whole other direction and, <clears throat> and build upon it. And I think that's what you can do with this. So, yeah. Execution, you know, the, everybody so far is working with Illustrator um, pretty much the way it was intended to use. It's, you know, you can create stylized, realistic illustrations in Illustrator. They take a whole lot of work. And to be quite honest, these days, nobody's going to pay you for the time it takes to, to make them. <laughs> so if anybody decides to do the, <clears throat> the product for the final assignment, um, good luck. It's a good exercise, but no one's going to pay you to do something like that anymore. Um, but for, you know, you, for commercial purposes, you always have to think about time, the time that it takes you to do something, because you know, that old adage, time is money couldn't be more true in the commercial art world. Um, you know, you have to be able to do something really extraordinary in it. In, you know, ideally, you have to be able to do it quickly. And I know that you said it took you initially a, a, a fair amount of time to do, but I guarantee you, if you had done this by hand or using any other program, it would take you even longer to be as accurate as you are. Oh, yeah, excellent. Really good. Look it up. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Um, anybody want to go next? How about Malik? What do you got? You there? There's your skateboards, Malik. There, Malik. Could yes. You okay. So, talk to us a little bit. Uh, I guess I wanted to try and make a design that started out simple and got just a bit more detailed and stylized as it went along, but I don't feel like I did the best job with it? The first two, I think, are the strongest. And the third one, <clears throat> I think, looks the most generic, maybe because it's your type choice. And if you want to make the, the skateboard, <clears throat> excuse me, the illustration, the type that you use be the, the, the principal driving force of the design, then I think it has to go a little bit further. But the other is, you know, with the stylized silhouettes of the landscape or the cityscape, I think work really kind of nice and there's you know, simplified form. The second one, my only criticism would be instead of having skate world in black in the type, then, you know, maybe make it yellow so that it pops. You know, don't make it subtle, make it nice and bold. I mean, it might be in silhouette in the real world, but this isn't the real world. You can make it, you know, any way you like. So yeah, the first two I think are the strongest. The third one, I think probably it looks a little too generic, kind of like, um, you know, but <clears throat> I like the idea that you're playing off of, you know, it's a theme you're working with skate world and different kinds of skate parks and different places so um, that these could be used. So your stylized approach, I think, is, you know, it's kind of bare bones, but kind of nice. And I, I also like how you've taken, and maybe that's <clears throat> a theme that you could expand on. Uh, I've got, it says open with on top of that, and I'm trying to, whoops, let me click that again. Oh, there we go. So how you've um, chosen to take skate world and wrap it around the edge of the sun. <clears throat> and that's subtle, but nice, you know, and the, the bottom one too, you could have 
you could have had skate world wrapped around that, or you could have had skate world wrapped around the inside of the sun on the second one. You know, you could play off of, of, of that as your theme. They work, it works really nice that way. And that's one of the, the main features, old, you know, long time features of Illustrator to be able to manipulate type and have it follow paths. Um, in 1988, 89, that was groundbreaking and it literally turned the design world on its head because all of that type, if you had it follow, you know, any kind of curve or unusual path, that all of that had to be done by hand. And now that you could do it in a matter of seconds and if you didn't like it, you could change the font, you could, you know, change the size, do anything, and go through dozens of, of alternative choices within a few minutes. Um, that just revolutionized um, graphic design. And that's something that you started and you could play upon that further, I think. In fact, you know, if you played in the third one, you know, you have Skate World, and if you had maybe instead of, um, if you use the more cal calligraphic or, um, typeface or one that looks more handwritten and converted that into a path. And then if you had um, a skateboarder kind of or skateboarders on that path kind of following it along, that would be kind of cool. So, you know, I'm kind of picking up on this little theme that you have here. It all started with the top one of the text following the curvature of the sun and doing that for the rest of these. And that would be kind of nice. Okay. Okay. Does anybody else have any thoughts about Moy? I think they're amazing. Yeah. I like the subtle the subtleties, but yet they they're, yeah it pops it's, and it works, it's a, so it's nice. It's a very bare bones approach to the design, but they work really, really well. Yeah. It's just the third one that I think could have been taken a little bit further to the bottom. I think that on the second one in the airplane message, if the skate world was transparent, to, so you see the orange in the back, yeah, that exactly. kind of would have just that like would, made the made it stand would, out. Yep. But that either way, it's that. it's awesome. Yeah, that would help enormously. Sure. Okay. Cool. Okay. Let's go back. Um, Susie, where is yours? Uh, I know that you're here somewhere. It's on the bottom, A. Gonzalez. Here we go. Okay. Okay. And here they are. Cool. Okay. Wow. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Very nice. So, talk to us. Um, I struggled with the concept for a long time, and I had my siblings just throw ideas at me, and I hated every single one of them. <laughs> so I decided to just stick with something and um, I really like kimonos. It ended up not being about kimonos. It, so, um, but that's where it started. I was like, you know, I like kimonos. I think they're cool. So I started with like um, this Japanese chick and then I changed it and um, her ethnicity changed and everything, but I kind of like ran with the concept. And then once I had like that idea, it kind of like, oh yeah, let's think about Japan. Let's think about like um, cherry blossoms and koi fish and stuff. And yeah, no, graphically yeah. they're all very strong. I mean, these very powerful images are just beautiful. Thanks. I don't know that I have any criticism. I don't know how I could improve it, make a change. Yeah. I did run out of time, so I think my um, cherry blossom one with the branch is the weakest one. Okay. Because I kind of just made those assets for. Um, the other boards and I was like, okay, I need one more board. So I'll just make a branch. Um, yeah. So what would, if you, is there anything that you would want to add to it or do it differently? If I had more time, I think I would have used the koi fish and make them bigger and more detailed and have like, like the white koi fish on one board and then the black koi fish on the other and kind of make them like more cohesive in that way. Okay. I don't know how, but yeah. Um, I really like the Serenity one. Somebody had a beautiful board with like the two fish. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was very detailed, and I love that. And I think um, something like that with more like, line, well, I don't know if the line would work, would work for me because it's more stylized, but something a little bit more um, less flat. Because mm -hmm. I feel like my fish look very flat with the line work on top of it. Yeah. Well, I, but I like the consistency that you have in your design choices. Thanks. And it, it, um, I know in my own personal work, I don't know that I'm very consistent style wise, but I know that if you want to pursue a living as a, as a graphic designer or commercial artist, um, for most art directors or people that, you know, do the hiring, they like to see consistency in the style, mostly because the people that do the hiring don't know what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's easier for them, you know, they, they know in advance, they're pretty sure of what they're going to get. <clears throat> and if they're, if they're like me and, you know, you're, you know, each project is decidedly really, really different, then they get kind of confused. And the consistency you have going on here would really be helpful. It's like, yeah, I know what I'm gonna get. So. That's true. I struggled with that a lot um, for the longest time. I think I am starting to finally develop a, a style and it's taken me forever, but yeah. Well, yeah, that takes time. And I know that years and years and years ago when I was an illustrator, I kind of struggled with that. But then I came to realize I really didn't I shouldn't be an illustrator or I was meant to be a fine artist. So <laughs> mm. and I had done it for about eight, nine years. So um, uh, that, you know, my heart and my um, mind were really meant to be a fine artist. And so that was the direction that I've gone for the past over 30 years. So yeah, oh, but wow. that's, but yeah, no, it, it, they work really, really well. Yeah. Perfect. Anybody else have any thoughts on these? I like that the background's consistent in all three, but like the gradient areas are different. Um, Where'd you, did you use like a, a pre-made shape in like already provided for the flowers or did you like do it yourself and like repeated it? Honestly, I Googled cherry blossoms and there was like um, a clip art that I traced over um, so I took like one of the cherry blossoms and I was like, all right, I'm going to make my illustration off of this. So I made each individual little petal and I compiled it together. And then I made another shape for the um, branch. And if you just Google cherry blossoms, you'll see which one. I <laughs> um, same with the fish. I kind of just traced it. The girl is the only one that I made. Um, yeah. But everything else I, I definitely took from online. Mm. And then I manipulated yeah, with the background, I, I like the boards. I really like that you changed uh, like the flowers themselves to more match the boards, so it's not like overwhelming. Yeah, I really like the the selectiveness on like what pops out, and what doesn't. Thanks. It was not easy. It took a lot of finessing and uh, <laughs> like messing around with it until I got it just right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, they look awesome. I like them. Good job. Very good. Okie doke. So back. Um, James, are you here? You have some? I'm here. I haven't. Uh, I haven't uploaded mine yet. Okay. 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 That's okay. Did we get everybody then? I think so. Um, okay, um, I appreciate all the work that you guys are doing. Um, I know, I think, Susie, you were saying the other day that it was a little bit difficult, you know, to deal with the, the timeline. Um, I think everybody has to remember that, uh, you know, we're condensing 18 weeks, or what we normally do in 18 weeks into six. So it does get a little intense during the summer. Yeah. I appreciate it. I think it's a fun, um, I think it's like a challenge, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's like two projects um, a week. Yep. So. It's a lot. Yeah. 
I think the challenging, the most challenging part is deciding with that time constraint. It's like, you have to make a decision, so it kind of forces you to go in a way. Which is, it can be good, but it's still challenging. Well, yeah. I mean, remember, these are student projects, um, so you are allowed to fail. And I don't mean get an F. I mean, you're allowed to try something, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You know, so what? Right. But, you know, um, and then with time, the more you do this, um, you will fall into a style, and the more you do this, um, it will become second nature. You're not going to think about the tools that you use. You're going to say, oh, I have an idea, and you're just going to go into autopilot, and you're going to make it. Um, you know, some of you may sort of feel like you're doing that already, but um, that you feel a little bit more comfortable with the, with the program than when you started. And that will happen, you know, you just, you know, after a while, it just becomes another tool. But um, I think you'll find the more you use Illustrator or Photoshop or any of the Adobe products or any computer graphics that um, they, they can be some really powerful tools that will enable you to do some great work. Um, not that you couldn't do that with traditional tools, um, traditional media and that sort of thing, but um, they're just really powerful. They work really great. So let me talk a minute. I did talk a minute the other day about the final project. And then I guess we can call it quits for today. Um, let me hold on here. Let me pause this for a second. The recording. So for your final project, you guys have lots of choices. If you would like to do a product, you're welcome to do so. Now, what do I mean by a product? It could be uh, an iron, it could be a camera, it could be a perfume bottle, it could be anything that you want. Really kind of the goal is to try to create something that is stylized realism with Adobe Illustrator and using a photograph to as your, as your source material. So that's what this is, okay? Pretty straightforward, but this will be extremely time consuming. So you may or may not want to do it. I really don't emphasize it these days. Back in the early days of Adobe Illustrator, I thought it was a very useful um, exercise. And it still is. It kind of helps you to build your chops, so to speak. And with the added tools, um, that are available for gradients and that sort of thing now in Illustrator. It makes stylized realism that much easier and um, better to attain, you know, uh, more realistically uh, uh, able to attain those, that kind of realism. Um, but it does take a lot of work. The only place that I can think of where there's a market for this sort of thing is high-end clip art. So if you are really interested in doing some of this professionally, um, you would pretty much work freelancing um, this sort of thing. And then you would submit it to services that buy this or they put it kind of on consignment. And then as people use your, your illustrations, they would, um, you would get a, a fee for that. You know, you get a cut of it that, that people are paying for. So that's one option for you. Um, the other one is architectural detail. And this one is the one that I've traditionally given is a final assignment. Um, just because, and, and it doesn't have to be architecture. I just chose that because if you were to find a photograph of an interesting architectural detail, you know, it could be not the entire building or landscape or whatever, but just a piece of the building. And um, it's more for the design and uh, to find something that's, that exists where you don't have to think about the design. You use that as a, as a, as a guide to, for your drawing. 
But then what I was thinking that you would do is that use this as an experimental piece. There's a lot that we're doing in Illustrator, especially with a brush, you know, with a brush exercise that we just did yesterday of trying different things that you haven't tried before. So make this an experimental piece to try stylistically something that you haven't done before. So that would be another option for you. And the third one, which sort of taps into this, and I've had students do before, it's instead of doing an architectural detail, um, that's, you know, very rigid and geometric and it could be very abstract. But if you like figurative work and you would like to do a portrait and explore different stylistic treatments, um, then that would be a third option. So it's really two, but expanding on this one. Instead, you know, that you could do something figurative. And you can see a few of the examples on my website of the portraits that people have done. It could be a portrait of your dog. It could be a self-portrait. It could be a portrait of your girlfriend or boyfriend or husband or wife or your grandmother, or, you know, whatever you want. Um, but that's entirely up to you. So those are all of your options. And if you can think of something different, just as a final project that you want to showcase your abilities using the, the program, then um, just let me know and um, you know, run it by me real quick. And you can, I, I don't see why not. It's these projects um, are just uh, meant to, as I said, to, to this to display to me, you know, that you. Um, understand how to use all the various tools that are available in, in Adobe Illustrator. So does that help you guys out a little bit? Give you some ideas? Uh, Professor, could we do like, like an entire building if we wanted? Like if I wanted to do one of the San Francisco painted ladies or I don't know, the Taj Mahal or something? Would that yeah. be possible? Why not? Okay. Cool. You know, just explore some, you know, I try, I try in most of my assignments, not all of them, but um, you know, it, it, I think learning comes from immersing yourself into something that you're really, you're genuinely interested in. And when I tell you to do something, it's like, well, yeah, I'll do it. It's an assignment and you get it done. But if you are gravitating towards something in particular that you really, really like, um, then I think you'll, you'll probably do a better job. The, um, Emily is asking when the final project will, will be due. It will be due um, a week from this Thursday. That's the last day of class. We have the remainder of this week, which is um, we have Wednesday and Thursday. And then next week we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And Thursday is the last day. So that will be it. Okay. If there aren't any questions, then that's it for today. And I'll go ahead and I'll stop the recording. And for those um, who want to watch later, they can. And um, I will see everybody tomorrow and we'll be working on lesson 12 tomorrow. Okay.